What's up guys, DJ Jeff here from Forerunner Entertainment and today I'm rocking the vacay face. It is mid-January right now, January, February. If you're a wedding DJ or if you're in the wedding industry, you'll know it's a really slow time of the year for us. So that's whenever we do all our modifications, that's whenever we buy new gear, that's when we tinker with our approach and our setup and just figuring out and tweaking new things to figure out how we're gonna run the, the following year. So today what I'm doing, I've got my ceremony system, which I'll guide you through and show you a little bit about how it works and what all is inside of it. But today we're gonna be doing some modifications to add in ports on the side so that way whenever we get to the gig we can just throw this stuff down take off the lid plug straight in and we're good to go for a very quick and easy setup so let's go ahead and dive right in all right so let's go ahead and show you what is inside the ceremony rig so we're gonna bust it open inside and the first thing you'll notice is my USB cord. Now the fun thing about the USB cord is you'll see over here on the side there's a tiny hole and I felt that that was really perfect to just kind of conceal that cable and then I could pop it straight into my MacBook Pro and we're good to go on the system. Now what we have built in, a pretty cheap little Rolls actually, I got it for 50 bucks at an estate sale so it was a definite steal so I went ahead and put that in here. So I've got six channels to work with, I've got my two microphone channels, I've got the, it's still marked CD mono but that is our, lap, our laptop now and then I've got the extra channels in case we're working with live musicians. So down here below we've got our Sennheiser G3 and G4 systems uh, and so we bust this bad boy open and now we've got our tiny little controller it's getting all scratched up but it still gets the job done uh everything that you need here it's a new mark edge i believe they're discontinued but it still works for me i have my dbx go rack that way we've got a nice little mixer here this is great dbx go racks are really great for anti-feedback system so if they're using the microphone incorrectly or if it's a little running too hot the anti-feedback system works great so if you spin around this the back side here we will see what we're working with for the back end. Now, for the back end, this is a little ugly because we bought this out and we've got our extension cables and I also have my speaker uh, electric power supply. So we bust those over to the side and you'll see we have our antennas here for our two wireless microphones. Now inside, I've got a million of these plugs and it drives me crazy, honestly, that pile uh, uh, conditioner here it's got a million different extra plugs that we really don't need but it's better to have it not need it than need it and not have it uh, and so we've got some cables in here as well we're really hoping to put these on the side so that again we can have a nice clean setup so let's go ahead and get this thing rolling all right so what our goal is today is we're going to be putting in we've got a male and a female xlr that we're going to be plugging into the side so we'll have a nice clean setup instead of having to worry about having it pop out from up here. So that's the goal today. We're gonna go ahead and see if we can remove all of these plates right here. Just pop this bad boy out and make it a lot easier for the install. All right, so we got all the screws off. Here's the moment of truth. See if we can just pull this bad boy up. Oh, that's gonna be a beautiful thing. So if you're ever wondering what the inside looks like, there we go. All right, so we're just gonna drill straight through this and it's actually plastic all the way through. So I think it'll be pretty easy, pretty easy project. So after we took off the base plate here, we noticed real quickly that we've got my wireless microphone receiver. We've got the antenna line going out that way, and which would be fine if we were putting in one, but we want to put in both next to each other. And so this is kind of in the way. So we're going to pop off the other side and see if we've got a little bit more wiggle room to work with. I know we've got another receiver on the other side, but we're just going to take a look and see what we've got. All right, cue the screw removal montage. So we popped off the other plate and now we're realizing that we're probably gonna have to do an install on both sides So we'll have the male on one side the female on the other That way we've got plenty of room to work with everything and not have to bend our cables too badly So here's the plan. We're just gonna butt this guy up right here in the corner We're gonna trace that bad boy that way we know where to drill our hole and we'll get a good measurement
<laughs> right as I stopped licking. <laughs> Hole number one. All right. Doesn't matter which way. Uh, turn it that way. Okay. All right, so we're gonna put the female side on the right hand side of the gig rig because I use the male side much more often. This is gonna be for anybody who needs to plug in to give us a third input. ahead and get it plugged in before we do the install bada bing so now we'll pull the excess cable back through get it nice and situated hold on my fingers like right there <laughs> Yes. Ah, I can't get to that side. And there we go, we're all done guys. So as you can see, it's a super simple mod, but it's definitely gonna be helpful. Just to speed up the setup, clean up the setup a little bit. We don't have messy cables going out everywhere. Bada bing, we'll see you next episode.